Reed died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May she now share with him eternal glory. everybody. I greet you all here in the church, those of you outside listening on our loudspeakers and those on watching on social media this morning uh, on our parish Facebook page and on YouTube. Indeed those of you who are outside if you have a mobile phone and can get a signal you can indeed see what's going on in the church by going on to the parish Facebook page. And I invite you to be seated for a moment and invite all of you to come forward and narrate for us some symbols of Reed's life. Lord God, we wish to celebrate and thank you for our mother's life, for her interest and talent, the 
made her the very special person that she was. Her life was full of love. Luke is bringing her CD of the Kilfenora Cayley Band to represent her home place and people. She loved Clara, Kilfenora and County Clare. Cormac brings her wedding photograph. 60 years in sickness and in health, for richer, for poorer, in sorrow, in joy, and in laughter. Brian is carrying some of the books that Mam used to teach children in her class who struggled with reading. She loved teaching. Kean is bringing her fiddle. She played and practiced rec regularly until very recently, always striving to improve. She loved music. Sean is carrying her iPad. Breach embraced technology. And through St. Kenneth, she taught children and adults from all over me the basics of computer competency. She loved learning. Finn carries her book, Killicon and Alias Beliver, A History of Beliver Parish, which involved years of research. She loved local history. Orna is bringing a recent photograph of Bridget's family, her five children and her husband, her four, 13 grandchildren and one great-grandchild, spouses, loved ones, all cherished. She loved us and we loved her. And now we place the Christian symbols over Breed's mortal remains. The book of the Gospels and the cross of Jesus Christ. When Breed was baptised, she received the sign of the cross. Our prayer this morning is that she will share in Christ's victory over sin and death. Breed, when coming to Mass, when receiving the sacraments, heard the words of Jesus. In placing the book of the Gospels over her mortal remains, this morning we pray that she will now hear the words of Jesus himself. Come, blessed of my Father. Brothers and sisters, I invite you to stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Pierce, Kiron, Paul, Maura, Anya, Eve, all of Breed's family, grandchildren, as we heard already, great-grandchild, nephews, nieces, all neighbours and friends who gather here this morning, the huge numbers outside the church listening, and those watching. You're very welcome to St. Columbanus Church. As we come, pray God to accept, cleanse, and allow Breed to enjoy his sight and be reunited with those who have gone before her, that they may enjoy the delights of heaven. To prepare ourselves to do that, to offer this holy mass, let each one of us pause, calling to mind our own sins and asking God's mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God and Father, 
It is our certain faith that your Son who died on the cross was raised from the dead, the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. Grant that through this mystery, your servant Breed, who has gone to her rest in Christ, may share in the joy of his resurrection. This we ask for our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Please be seated now as we listen to God's word, read for us by Neve and Andrea this morning. The word of the Lord, a reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to refrain, a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. The word of the Lord. the second reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. For us, our homeland is in heaven, and from it we await a saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will change our lowly body to be like his glorious body, by the power which enables him even to subject all things to himself. The word of the Lord. Thanks. 
the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up the hill, and there he sat down. He was joined by his disciples, and he said to them, How blessed are the poor in spirit, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, they shall be consoled. Blessed are the gentle, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for what is right, they shall be satisfied. How blessed are the merciful, for they shall have mercy shown unto them. How blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted in the cause of right, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people abuse you and persecute you and speak all kinds of untruth against you on account of my name. For yours will be the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated for a few moments. <clears throat> My brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, this morning, when Breed's mortal remains were brought to the door of the church that she was so familiar with here, three things of significance took place. The first thing at the door was I sprinkled her mortal remains with holy water. Then her body was brought to the foot of the altar here at the steps, and I placed the book of the Gospels and the cross over her. Water, word, and crucifix. When I sprinkled her mortal remains with holy water, I said the words, in baptism, breathe died with Christ. May she now share with him eternal glory. When I placed the Gospels over her, I prayed that she would hear the words of Christ that she heard so often in life herself. Come, blessed of my Father. And when I placed the cross over her, I said the words, In baptism she shared with Christ. In death may she now share his glory, the life of Christ. Come, blessed of my Father. These actions not only remind us of the faith that Breed lived, that she taught, and that she loved, but also that we too share those same beliefs, those same faith, particularly the love that God has for us. The sprinkling of holy water reminds me and you this morning of her parents, Mary and John John. And I hope you think of your grandparents this morning, Kieran, Paul, Maura, Anya and Neve your in-laws, Pierce. They had, Pierce. they had Breed and her four other siblings baptised. Baptised in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And at that moment she entered into a relationship with Jesus Christ. It was a relationship from the moment of her baptism that was to be the foundation of her life and love. 
we are reminded, every one of us, and Rita was reminded so often that when she signed herself with the sign of the cross, she should give thanks for her parents' decision to have her baptised. The cross reminds us that Jesus Christ, by shedding his blood, the Lamb of God, saved us and that our souls will live forever. Even though our bodies die, the baptised soul lives for eternity. And everything we do in life, brothers and sisters, should reflect the fact that our souls are going to live forever. That being the case, every every action we do should be based on love. And so here's today's theology lesson. I know Breed would love it that her funeral would be turned in, if you'd like, to an extension of the classroom. So we'll have to do a bit of teaching today. I want to tell you what the theological definition of love is. It's this. To always will the good of the other. What is love? God. What is God? To always will the good of the other. Breed responded in love because she knew that her own love for us, her family, her friends, her teaching, her life, was a reflection of God's love for her. Pierce, you knew that love only too well. 64 years of that love, 60 years of marriage, four years of curtain, marrying in July 1960 down in Athlone, halfway between Mead and Clare, to say, I love you, I love you only, and I will love you always, was a wonderful gift. You found something in life that very few find nowadays. You found love, and thank God for it this morning. As I said, getting married and heading off on a borrowed rocking caravan. I'm told it didn't have a twin axle, twin being the operative word. Maybe if it had a twin axle, it mightn't have rocked so much. Love binds a family together. Kieran, Paul, Maura, Anya, Neve, you know that very well. Breed's grandchildren, her many neighbours and good friend Mary, will speak highly of the love that Breed had for others. The love for her family, her church, her parish here in Beliver, her love for County Clare, her love for teaching, is synonymous among the people of this parish and beyond. I don't want any teachers listening in today to feel bad, but in 20 years as a priest, I've never heard so many grown adults in their 40s and 50s say, Mrs. Heine was my favorite teacher, and say it with great conviction. And so as one of his successors, I want to say we prayer this morning for Father Kiernan. I think he made a good choice back then. Not only did he give Beliver a great teacher, but he also gave it a great wife and a mother, and through that, a great family too. Breed's love of teaching did not remain in the classroom. She was given the gift by God, and she offered that to others. Here in our community of Beliver and beyond, teaching computer skills to adults back in the day when it wasn't as popular as it is now throwing herself wholeheartedly into so many projects, like, as was mentioned by Anya earlier on, the Beliver Historical Society, in producing with MJ, Killa Conigan, alias Beliver, a history of the Beliver Parish. I have a signed copy of that book. I'm probably one of the only ones who got a free copy of it. At the time, I was only a month in the parish, and it's signed by both Breed and MJ, and I treasure it. On my many visits to Breed, She thanked me so much for the sacraments. She loved receiving the Lord. But I noticed over her bed, on the shelf, language books. Not just your ordinary Irish, English and maths book that you might expect a teacher to have, but lo and behold, French, Italian, German, indeed, Lithuanian. Breed was humble when I asked her about them. She said, ah, I like to dabble, Father. Playing the violin was a later development in her life, and she would bring it along here to the church, up in the gallery with the choir, to help enhance our liturgical celebrations here, and thereby giving praise to God. The Beatitudes from St. Matthew's Gospel that I've read for this this morning 
are referred to often by scripture scholars as attitudes of life or attitudes of being. They go beyond the Ten Commandments in a way that doesn't just keep us from sin sinning against God and neighbour, but rather they compel us to love one another, love willing the good of the other person. Who doesn't recognise Breed Heine in these instructions in the Beatitudes this morning? Gentle, peacemaker, merciful, pure of heart, cause of right, and so on. Breed's life was modelled on those words. There's an old American Indian saying that says there are two wolves inside each one of us, <clears throat> seeking to have control over us. One of the wolves hungers for jealousy, greed, and power, and money, while the other hungers for love, peace, and justice. When asked by a young boy which of the two wolves would be successful in his life, the chief Indian responded, the one you feed. Breed Heine, whom we honour with Christian burial this morning, fed the right wolf. Her life was best reflected in her desire to serve God and her family, and to love her neighbour as herself. She walked through life with the humility of a woman who walked in the grace of God. It is an attitude of being that was based on her faith in Jesus Christ, a faith we share that promises us eternal life, eternal love, eternal peace. And so we gather this morning not to say goodbye to Breed, but simply see you later. For just as we bid our farewells to her earthly presence, we are confident that one day soon we will greet her again. She will indeed be there to welcome us, please God, when our life is complete and our loving is done into the mansion that God has prepared for us. And for any one of us who might even think that we can no longer talk or seek Breed's counsel, remember, she is still alive in the presence of God. The only thing that has changed this morning is her address. May she rest in peace. I invite you to stand. Niall, Tom, Claire, Ronan and Rory will come forward now and lead us in our prayers of intercession. My dear friends, God our Father has gathered us together in his presence. Let us make our prayers known that he will grant us what we need and ask for. We pray for Breach. May God receive her kindly. May she continue to inspire us, to intercede for us, and to be there at the end to welcome us in our turn into eternity. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Quiv Newmidge, Urhusan, Ajimi, Rowing, Erschli, Nafirna, Demwinja Markham, August Major Haim, Gohairaha, Ahirna, Eishli. Ahirna, be Kansa, August Eishli. We pray for those who helped to nurse Breed in her illness and made it possible for us to care for her at home, as was her wish. May they be rewarded for their gentleness and kindness. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. <clears throat> we pray for all who mourn today, that they will receive strength to help them in their sadness and grief. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Uh, we pray for all those who are struggling in these difficult times and who have been saddened, isolated, made ill or died due to COVID. May they be comforted by the gentle hand of God. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For a moment in the silence of our hearts, 
Let us present our own particular prayers. We had had a wonderful devotion to Mary, the mother of Jesus. Let us ask Our Lady's intercession this morning. We wish the Kayla, Shilavah Muda, the Talon de Grosta, Torn Chirna Lat, the Spano Hui de Beno, Ogs the Spano Chirna de Verdis, the neighbor who wore her day, Viri and Paki Nish, Ogs the Rural Mosh. Amen. Lord Jesus, support us all today long until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes, and the busy world is hushed, and the fever of life is over and our work is done. Then, Lord, in your mercy, grant to us, your children, a safe lodging, a holy rest, and peace at last. We make all our prayers through Christ our Lord. I invite you to be seated for the offertory. sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Amen. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant, greed, we beseech your mercy that she, who did not doubt your son to be a loving saviour, may find him a merciful judge, for he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has gone, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy. Holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. I invite you to kneel for the Eucharistic prayer. <clears throat> you are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you. By the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. Save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, may be filled with his Holy Spirit, and become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed martyrs, with St. Columbanus, with St. Bridget, and St. Patrick, and with all the saints and whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely from failing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, Advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, your servant Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have gathered before you this morning. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant, Breach, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that Breach, who was united with your son in a death like his, in baptism, may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died, and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To all our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at our passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we should be like you for all the ages, and praise you without end, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to stand as we pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Saviour gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, for in the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For the distribution of Holy Communion this morning, I will come to you in your seats. If you're blocking somebody in towards the wall, would you, before you receive Holy Communion, step out and step back, allowing the person on the inside to receive first, and then receive yourself and go back into your pew. We do one pew at a time. For those of you who are outside the church, Shani will go to the door. And for those of you who'd like to receive Holy Communion, would you just be socially distanced and come uh, receiving stretched out hands and receive the Lord in Holy Communion. And for those of you who do not wish to receive Holy Communion today for whatever reason, and indeed those who are watching online, we offer the following spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as being already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Let us pray. Lord God, your Son, Jesus Christ, gave us the sacrament of his body and blood to guide us in our pilgrim way to your kingdom. May our sister breed, who shared in the Eucharist, come now to the banquet of life that Christ has prepared for us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Maura is going to read a little reflection by Ned Crosby by way of a prayer this morning. This was written by Ned Crosby, a philosopher, poet, friend of my mother and parish priest of Kilfenora, County Clare, the fiddler. Well gone the days of twinkle, twinkle, of high diddle, diddle, and the cat and the fiddle. Now scales flow from her fingers, arpeggios hop on the bow, sonatas fly from the strings, the air is dizzy with reels, they sing to the sea and sky and fall down into the street. Eyes look up at the window. A neighbour brings out a chair. Thank you, Maura. And before our final commendation and prayers, if I may also add uh, and my thanks to those who have enhanced our liturgy this morning. As always, Gwen is in the corner accompanied by Mary on the organ for beautiful um, cantering this morning. And uh, thanks to those who read and prepared everything so very well. Certainly somewhat of the school teacher have rubbed off in Breed's family. They had everything meticulously planned this morning and I thank you for that. And in anticipation of our final recessional, I want to thank our young guests here this morning, Orla and Cormac, who are going to play the violin as we take Breed from the church this morning to her place of rest. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand. Trusting in God, we have prayed together this morning for Breed. And now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see her again and enjoy her friendship. Although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, let us console one another with our faith in Jesus Christ. Our response 
this morning is Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to her aid. Hasten to meet her. Angels of the Lord, receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. May Christ to call you, take you to Himself. May angels lead you to the presence of Abraham. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Eternal rest, run to her, O Lord, let perpetual light shine upon her. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister breed in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings you bestowed upon her in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us to remain, to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and our sister forever through Christ our Lord. Read. May the angels lead you to paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city the new and eternal Jerusalem, and where Lazarus is poor no longer, may you have eternal rest. In peace, friends, let us take breed to her place of rest.